Welcome back. In this specific section we're going to talk about a systems development process which includes basically the following aspects. Imagine that you've got a computer system, an information system that needs to be created from scratch or that perhaps you have an existing system where you need to make modifications for this. So this following discussion actually explains the whole system development life cycle and all the steps that companies and developers need to go through in order to develop a new system. So let's look at the definition. Systems development is actually the activity of creating or modifying an information system. And this activity is broken into different steps which we're going to see in the next slide. Now why would companies develop new systems or make modifications to existing systems. And it all comes down to efficiency, the business goals and mainly costs. In many cases we would find that the new system would reduce the operation costs within a company as well as um, the effort of conducting business. So you're going to streamline a lot of the processes. It's going to assist you in developing or meeting new business needs, perhaps um, adopting to new government regulations or requirements to improve your customer experience or perhaps to incorporate new technology. Now what we do find is that with any type of information system as the industry evolves these systems also need to evolve with the new developments. For example We've spoken about cloud computing. So a requirement nowadays is that most systems should enable the employees or for some of the sections of the system to be saved on cloud services. And we're going to come back to this at a later stage as well. Some future projects in systems development could include um, applying data analytics to large amounts of data. We're hearing more and more about this. We, because we have such large amounts of data that people find it difficult to get to quick decisions and conclusions and that we basically need to help them in analyzing the large data sets. As I've mentioned, we need to, or companies need to start to leverage cloud computing and the advantages that it can bring. For example, if you're subscribing to cloud computing services, you actually saving costs because you don't need to go and set up your own computers, your own storage facilities, backups, personnel, all those kind of issues. And then the third one that has an effect currently on a lot of these systems is customers and users expect them to have mobile applications linked to them or mobile interfaces which they can actually access in order to work on these systems. Now, a newer trend that we find is that um, a few years back, companies would generally do their own systems development. So they would have hired a team of people that worked within the company, that did the whole analysis, determined what the users want, the employees wanted, and then they've created the system. Now, what we find more and more is that these service requests are now outsourced so they don't want to have the expertise in-house but they rather would pay for a service provided by somebody else. Now let's go through the actual system development life cycle. Now if we look at the life cycle we find that there's four phases. The investigation phase, sorry the investigation and design and analysis phase the design and construction phase, the implementation, integration and testing phase and then lastly the disposition, operations and maintenance phases. And then if you look at each one of these phases you will note that they've got individual steps. So if we go through the whole system or if we go through this whole phased approach, companies would generally first go and define the problem or see what is is that they're trying to solve. So generally there would be a recommendation for a new system based on various inputs or there might have been a problem that they're trying to solve. There might be a new opportunity that I've, they have identified 
for which they need a new system or for which they need to adopt current existing systems. So number one, define the problem. Number two, determine the user and business requirements. So what is it that you want the system to do? What are the objectives of this particular system? If we go into the next phase, so the, the design and construction phase, if we look at the steps there, now we will need to define how the system will meet the user and business requirements. So we're actually delving a little deeper into the process, looking at what are the basic requirements, what are the data formats that's required by customers. And that will lead you into the next step, the design step, where you're actually going to design and develop your database. You're going to create the, the user interface, the screen sets requirement in order for them to interact with the system. And typically this is when all the components are put together, you end up with your first versions of your system. Now for the next phase, we're going to going to implementation, integration and testing. So once the system has been developed as indicated in step number four, we're going to demonstrate that it meets the user and business requirements. So this would typically be done in-house in your organization where a small sample size would interact with the system and they would see if there's any issues with the system, if there's any flaws, bugs, mistakes and whether the system actually do what it's intended to do. Once everybody's happy, it's going to go into step number six, where it's going to be moved into production. And then again, during the production phase, if there's any mistakes or issues, these will be highlighted and these will be corrected. So it's a continuous process of making sure that the new system or the improved system actually functions the way that it's intended to do. If we look at the last phase, the disposition operations and maintenance phase, the system in step number seven will be continuously monitored. So they're going to look at the running of the system. Um, does it need or meet the business requirements and needs? What can be done to make it more efficient, to make it faster, to make smaller improvements? And then step number eight, Generally, all systems at some stage would reach an end-of-life cycle and would need to be concluded in order for a new system to come and perhaps perform some new functionality or to have a, a better efficiency associated with that new system. So generally, you would find that some of the older systems um, it's not good practice to just take a system and continuously improve it. At some stage, it might require your company to actually go and redevelop the whole system by looking at the latest technologies. So to summarize, let's look at each one of these steps and then what's going to happen. So as we've indicated, underneath investigation, step number one, we're going to sorry, obtain a clear understanding of what the problem is and what we're trying to solve. For analysis, we're going to look at the existing system if it's available, look at its strengths and weaknesses, and then identify what the new system need to do or what the improved system actually need to do based on the needs of the users within your organization. For the design steps, we're actually going to determine how the system must function as I've indicated, what are the input requirements? What do people need to put into the system? What processes are we going to have? What procedures are we going to have? And then what output should be generated by the system in order for it to meet its business to meet the business requirements? For construction, step number four, this is where we actually develop and design the whole system, or you take the design and you develop the final system putting it into operation, making sure that you've got the necessary hardware and software installed in your company, that you actually go code and test the system, that you create new data if it's required, that you load your existing data perhaps into the system, and that you start performing initial tests. So this is typically where we would find your prototyping systems or examples. 
coming back to step number five integration and testing all the components are now linked to the system so this could include external systems um, for example if you think about organizations spread across multiple locations we need to ensure that all of these now effectively communicate with this newly created or developed system you also need to demonstrate that the system meet the requirements and the needs of our business and our users which would lead or go into implementation where we install the actual system we make sure that people got the proper training that the system is running the way that it's intended to do and that if problems are encountered that you can automatically go and correct those problems for operation and maintenance the ongoing running of the system will be monitored so continuously people will look at the system they will make sure that all the data are entered correctly that users are happy with the system if there are problems trying to resolve those problems and then make the necessary changes to it and then step number eight as i've indicated um, the disposition end of life of the system extract the necessary data from that system and then convert it into new formats if it's required to go to another system or perhaps a new system so making sure that all your important information are extracted out of the system before you stop using that particular system for the next section we're going to look at organizations and how they use information systems